Hey, Stefan, John Scott. Um, just from your perspective, what has been different these past two games with the offense compared to when the production was, was so different in the first four? Um, more so everybody just, we're not executing at a, at a high level as much as we would like, uh, or the, at the execution standpoint, everybody can do a little more. And we realize that, and, uh, we got to help our quarterback out. We got to help out the guys in the backfield. We got to do whatever we got to do to, to win games. We've seen a lot more zone, you know, um, in the earlier weeks, we didn't see that much zone, uh, at the Tennessee game. We anticipate a lot of guys playing it now. And as far as like growing from it and, and playing some better ball. Thanks, Stefan. Okay, hey, Stefan, uh, Mark Gaughan from Buffalo News. Thanks for doing this. Uh, now that you've gotten to see Cole Beasley up close, um, just what uh, what stands out to you about his route running and all his moves? Uh, he's a professional, for one. I comes ready to work each and every day. Um, this is joy, he is a joy to be around. He's one of the guys that uh, always comes ready to play. He's a competitor. He always wants to compete at a high level. And on game day, uh, he has a saying that he likes to party. So uh, he, he's definitely one to watch always. I learned a lot from playing in the inside. He plays predominantly the inside, but he's pretty much a craftsmanship of knowing, knowing how to get open. Thank you. Steph Finesse, Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports. Tenet, what's up, big dog? What's up, big guy? How you doing? You good. Okay, man. You know, hey, from four and zero to four and two, you got to take the good with the bad. You know what I mean? I know that. You know, hey, we wish that you know you could go sixteen, seventeen, and zero, but in this league, it doesn't happen. So, how do a how does a team bounce back, back from you know losing yeah. back to back round? We play some good teams um, throughout this year. Uh, you know, it's not the end of the world. A lot of people want it to be the end of the world, but we're sitting at four and two. Um, a lot to learn from these past two games, and I think it will help us in the long run, especially in November, December, when you play football. And that was, and later on, it's a different climate in X Y Z. But I feel like we can learn a lot from those past two losses. Because you, I feel like you learn more, you learn more from losing than you do winning. So we're just trying to learn from it, grow from it. Now you know, right now you know where, how everybody's playing. You don't take a rocket science to figure that one out. So how important is it to really get this run game going for you guys on the offense and stuff? Uh, it's definitely pivotal. As far as like for the guys on the outside, we can definitely help in the run game. Um, you know, if they're going to put the two shell on us, we got to do what we can to uh, block those cover down guys and block the guys that's, that's in the mix so we can break some runs and kind of open it up for those guys. Just as far as like being a, being a team player, especially on the outside, uh, you can't do everything. Everybody can just do their job. So that's all we're going to try to do. Hey, man, I like your leadership on that sideline after the game, man. Keep that up. Thanks, big guy. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Hi, Stefan. <clears throat> Matt Fairburn here. Um, I'm curious, you mentioned teams are playing a bit more zone on you guys. What are the challenges um, when you're going up against zone as opposed to man? What are some of the keys to it as a receiver? Uh, challenges in zone. I mean, man to man coverage, you know, you're just beating really one man. You know, in the shell, you're really more so finding the spots, finding the see sweet spots. You know? Uh, the areas you're running the space, just like they are trying to anticipate where to be and want to be there for the quarterback. So um, for us as receivers, you know, clearing it up for the quarterback as, as soon as possible, as quick as possible for him is easier for him because our quarterback has, you know, crazy arm talent. He can put the ball anywhere he needs to put it. Um, as far as like being in those spots when you're supposed to be there, uh, time and wise is what we're working through right now. But so like it's nothing that we haven't seen before, especially, you know, guys, I mean, we've been playing football for a very long time. It's not your first time seeing zone. So um, we're going to do whatever we got to do to win games and get those W's in the win column. So uh, the difference is it's just you beat more than one man, you're going against space and time at that point. So that's pretty it. And just out of curiosity, what happened on that penalty at the end of the game? What was your understanding of, of what they were calling there? Out of curiosity, what? What was what was um, what happened on the penalty at the end of the game that that you had? What what were they? What was your understanding, I guess, of what they called you for there? What penalty? The one when uh, you were coming back to the line of scrimmage. I think it was on the the last last drive or second last. Oh, drive. we were, we were, we was in a hurry up. 
Um, and they called me for not being sick. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Were you, did you have yeah. the play call at that point? No, I didn't even, I didn't know the play. Okay. So that's what it looked like. You were looking yeah. toward the quarterback. Gotcha. Yeah, so I'm, I, I got it late and then boom, bust snap. So I just got to hurry up and get back. That's good. Yeah. Thanks, Stefan. Oh, no, how's it going? Hey, hey Stefan, you, uh, you, you spoke a little bit last week about um, Chad Hall. And I wanted to follow up with you there because I've noticed since he took over, man, that guy is just a ball of energy. Like, I love watching him out there with you guys, like running routes, showing how to run routes. And, you know, can you just go into that a little bit more, your relationship with him and, and how, how great he is with you guys as a group? I've been around a couple of receiver coaches, as we know. Um, all done a great job. Been around a great group of guys. Uh, it's always fun when you've been around, when, you're, when you have a coach that's played the position, that you understand that things are going to be perfect for us. As far as like when certain routes and X, Y, Z and how they how they playing a part and just doing your job. So working with a guy like that, a guy that has played the game one uh, and a guy that kind of understands the position, it's always makes for a great relationship because he understands. But uh, part of being understanding, he still makes it a, he still makes his thing to have you be accountable. You know, still pushes you through um, regardless on you know being understanding and not I get it, but he don't care about that. He wants you to. Uh, be at the right depth, be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, and uh, make the play. You know, it's not not too much, not too much, uh, you know, I guess razzle dazzle or magic that goes involved. Make the play, catch the ball, throw it to you, and uh, run afterwards. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, Stephon, John Free here. Um, it seems that John Brown is really gutting it out, you know, doing everything and anything he can to get out on the field. Yeah. Um, Especially this last game, it seemed like he was really just doing anything he could to be out on that field. When you see a guy like that in your position group doing that, what does that kind of mean to a guy like you? You know, you already got a lot of – I already personally got a lot of respect for him. Um, this team has a lot of respect for him. He's one of the guys that, you know, makes players at a high level all the time. So, um, we know that he's out there giving it his best, you know, uh, it's also a testament to what kind of guy he is, what kind of player he is. He doesn't want to give up on his team. He wants to be out there. Uh, and it's also for the guys behind him uh, and us as well. Uh, take care of him. You know, if you can do whatever you can to help him get open, uh, help him. You know, or just trying to take the load off him a little bit. Uh, that's why we kind of like got those young guys in there as well. Um, you know, that's just that's really how the game goes. And it's kind of like unfortunate, but uh, we, we want everybody to be playing at a high level. And he's given everything that he has. So. Uh, we got the utmost respect for him, you know, and, you know, me personally, you know, I love me some John Brown. So uh, I love having him out there. I just want him to be healthy as well. A, a healthy John Brown along with you. How, how much does that change things when teams try to go into yeah. a shell? It definitely changes a lot. It definitely changes a lot. You know, not having him really change our game uh, against Tennessee. So um, he definitely one of those driving forces on our offense. We got – we got some time on there, and it's, it's, it's always good when we got all our pieces. Awesome. Thank you, Stefan. Appreciate you.